Hi, my name is Jerry Croft. I'm a professor in California. I made a few videos and wrote books on uh, these subjects. Uh, this is a new crop circle. Uh, two or three weeks ago, now, background. I wrote this book, Messages from the Gods. This crop circle is not in that book, but I want to give you some background. Look at the subtitle. A Scientific Exposition on the Extraterrestrial Origin of Crop Circles. I have 42 crop circles in that book about crop circles that I think may not have been made by human beings. Okay, And what do they say? How do they get decoded? And that's where we're coming from in this talk for this crop circle this August. Okay, Now the first question is, when you're dealing with that question, uh, you want to make sure that the humans were not involved. I write to people. I'm in touch with some of the underground people. Remember, if you make a crop circle in a farmer's field, it's a crime. It's You're trespassing. You're causing one to $3,000 worth of damage. And most crop circles that are made by humans, I find stupid, tacky, ridiculous, sloppy. But this one, that com those questions occur... But uh, were there any barking dogs? Were there any cut fences? Were there any footprints noted going to or from the crop circle? Were there any witnesses? Did, was the farmer complicit? The farmer was angry. He didn't want anybody to go into his field. So, uh, on the, and I also wrote to people to say, do you know anyone who made this crop circle? Zero. So I'm proceeding on the assumption that maybe this is not made by humans. And one other element is precision. You're supposed to be a team of humans going into a farmer's field making this exact, incredibly articulate crop circle on the cover of darkness. So nobody stumbled, nobody fell, nobody crushed some of the wheat. Nothing, perfect contours, everything is perfect in the middle of the night. Okay, well, the next question is, uh, are there any internal measurements that you could make that would suggest maybe there's something peculiar here? Well, the farmer wouldn't let anyone in. There were only drone photos. But I took a photograph and blew it up, and I noticed something. I noticed that if you drew a line from that nucleus to that nucleus to that nucleus to that nucleus to that nucleus, all the lines were exactly the same length to the millimeter in my photograph. So how do you do that in the middle of the night uh, over many meters of crop circle? Well, the next question is, what if? What if this wasn't made by human trespassers and vandals? Uh, what would it be saying? Okay. Now, I, there's a place called the Tro Crop Circle Connector, which publishes articles and commentary about uh, various crop circles. And this one, there were a number of theories. There always are. It's a planetary clock, someone said. Uh, it's a sun and five planets. Uh, it's a comet. Another person said it's the age of alchemy uh, and the age of Aquarius. Another said it's a Venus pentagram. Another said it's so there to awaken the divinity within you. Well, I didn't find any of these uh, theories compelling. Uh, I like when a th your theory fits the crop circle. And uh, getting a close fit is, uh, to me, a good interpretation. So, more background. In my book, in 2010, I saw this crop circle and wrote about it. I thought that was boron. A, the fifth element, the periodic table, uh, a nucleus, five electrons. Why boron? Well, uh, boron is exotic. It's rare, but it's used in nuclear fusion research. And I thought, hmm, that's kind of an interesting message. If there are alien intelligence sending us commentary about something. Now... I want to go to another crop circle, still background. This is 2017. That's in France. Now, if you look in the center of that thing, you'll see a bit of a smudge. That's a person standing there. Okay, That gives you an idea how gigantic that crop circle is. So 
I noticed that hydrogen has one electron. That fits. I noticed that helium has two electrons. That fits. So we have hydrogen and helium in a crop circle that is larger than a football field and wider than a football field. Why? Where, where do hydrogen and helium shake hands but in nuclear fusion research? And about 150, 175 miles south of this crop circle was, is, one of the, one of the largest nuclear fusion research facilities in the world. It's called ITER. Imaginez que l'expérience soit concluante, qu'elle puisse trouver demain des applications industrielles. Nous aurons mis au point là une énergie non polluante, décarbonée, sûre et pratiquement sans déchets, qui permettra tout à la fois de répondre aux besoins de toutes les zones du globe, de relever le défi climatique et de préserver les ressources naturelles. So. Uh, my interpretation in that about that crop circle was that it was essentially saying that uh, they're going about nuclear fusion research incorrectly. They should be using uh, different forms of hydrogen and helium and tritium than they're using. So it was a strange uh, piece of advice. Now, let's go back to our crop circle. This is 2010, maybe boron, and this is 2022. If it's boron, they're telling us a lot more about it than they did 12 years earlier. They're showing us interrelationships between if these are electrons and the nucleus, right? So let's take a look at a couple properties. First, there are some weird spins in this crop circle. You notice you're coming in counterclockwise, but you come out clockwise. Same thing down below. You go in counterclockwise and you come out clockwise. You see that? So the spin is reversing. Now, if those are electrons, they seem to be interacting with the nucleus, but they also seem to be interacting with other electrons. Now, do electrons do that? Electron spin is interacting with the nucleus right there. You see that? Now, but the also the electrons are interacting with each other. You see that? So do do those do electrons do that or am I on the, on the wrong path? Is this not boron? So that's the question that I'm starting to pursue, okay? That's where electrons are interacting with other electrons. All right, what do you make of all this? Well, I'm a professor of psychology. What do I know about physics? So, if you're a professor, you can write other professors, and they are polite sometimes, and will write back to you. So, I don't mention crop circles because if you do, you're going into their spam folder. But I asked them questions about boron, and here it is. I wrote to eight nuclear physicists who are interested in boron research in preparation for this talk. Not all of them replied. Some did. Here's the question. Dear Professor, I know that boron is being studied for its potential in fusion research, and I know boron has five electrons. I'd like to ask if the spin of the electrons in boron research has received attention. Is it important? Is boron's spin relevant to fusion research? And if so, how? Finally, is it possible the spin can be reversed as in clockwise and counterclockwise? Sincerely yours. Well, I got a couple answers. One from the University of Michigan, a professor of nuclear physics. The spin of electrons on boron and other atoms has received attention. And if you somehow flip the spin of one of them, you'll put the atom into higher, a higher energy state. I don't know what that means, but I think I'm still on the right track. So it's time to look at some literature reviews and do their homework. Now, I want you to be prepared. A little patience here. to do. So we need to do homework to find out, because unless you're a nuclear physicist, you're in the same boat that I'm in. Okay? Hydrogen boron fusion might be the answer to nuclear fusion. One article. It says, a nuclear fusion reaction is the holy grail of limitless energy as produced by our own sun. However, it seems we're always a few years away 
from actually being able to generate energy from highly volatile reactions. This is where HB11 steps in, also known as hydrogen boron fusion. The technique involves employing naturally abundant hydrogen and boron, B11, coupled with special lasers to start the fusion process. The process does not require incredibly high temperatures, as in the case of deuterium-tritium fusion reactions. Okay, I understand a little of that. Here's a doctoral student giving us an update of an article that was published at an almost exact same time as the crop circle. My name is Sid Cowley. I'm a PhD student studying at the University of York and working on diverter plasma physics at the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. Today is Friday, the 26th of August, and I'm very pleased to give you your weekly fusion news update. Stor Meet Copernicus, TAE's planned billion degree hydrogen boron nuclear fusion reactor the second story today comes from Interesting Engineering and covers TAE Technologies, a private fusion firm and fusion industry association member aiming to generate energy using hydrogen boron fusion reactions. The primary benefit of using this fuel mixture is that it's aneutronic, so it doesn't produce many neutrons, which are usually harmful for the surrounding material. The main challenge to this hydrogen boron approach is that to efficiently fuse those two nuclei together requires incredibly high temperatures. This article reports that TAE's current demonstration device, Norman, successfully achieved a plasma temperature of 75 million degrees Celsius, which is more than two times greater than what Norman initially aimed to achieve. Now the company will fund the initial construction of Copernicus, their next generation reactor, which aims to maintain a plasma temperature of nearly 100 million degrees Celsius. To put that into context, that is incredibly hot. It is more than six times hotter than the core of our actual sun. Okay, uh, a little more literature review here. This is an article called Boron and Nuclear Fusion. One clean fusion process without neutron prediction is the fusion of hydrogen with boron isotope. Boron-11 plays a vital role in creating the conditions necessary to release energy and fusion experiments. The boron reserves, estimated to be over a billion tons, could power the planet for 3,000 years. Interesting. Another one, the fifth element. This is the last one. A string of boron compounds in exotic bonding states have turned the element's behavior on its head. The renaissance in boron chemistry is all the more remarkable. Boron definitely has more surprises awaiting discovery. Okay, so where does that literature review leave us? Well, we need to link the crop circle more closely with boron if this is really a crop circle about boron. Let's start with electronic spin. We see it spinning clockwise. We see it spinning counterclockwise. Do borons, electrons, do that? Watch this video. Apart from moving around the atomic nucleus, electrons spin on their own axes. This spinning motion of the electrically charged particle, called electron spin, generates a magnetic field. There are only two possible directions of spinning motion for an electron, clockwise and counterclockwise, and they are represented by the electron spin quantum number MS. It can assume only the two values, plus one half or minus one half. The clockwise spinning of an electron is associated with the value of MS equals plus one half for the electron spin quantum number and is represented by an arrow pointing up. Counterclockwise spinning is associated with the value of MS equals minus one half for the electron spin quantum number represented by an arrow pointing down. So that's entirely consistent so far with the crop circle. The electrons spin clockwise and counterclockwise with boron or with other atoms, and they, they do the same in our crop circle. So we're still on the right path. I'm not giving up yet. Saying it another way, it's called spin orbit interaction at magnetic moments over my head, probably over yours, but let's 
see if we can understand it. Now, what is the spin orbit interaction? Let's go back to our atomic model. So in the atomic model, you have electrons revolving around the nucleus. Now, electron is a charged particle. When the charged particle revolves around the nucleus, it has an orbital angular momentum. It also has a magnetic moment associated with its orbital motion. Now, electron is also spinning on its own axis. And because of its spinning on its own axis, it has a magnetic moment. So the electron has a magnetic moment due to its orbital motion. It also has a magnetic moment due to its spinning on its own axis. Both these two magnetic moments can interact with each other. In fact, when these two magnetic moments are in the same direction, it is seen that the energy of that kind of a system is higher. And when the magnetic moments are in opposite directions, the energy of that kind of a system is lower. This is known as spin orbit coupling or spin orbit interaction. Okay, well, we're still on the right path, but Here's the point when I'm trying to explore this crop circle. The crop circle is showing the electrons interacting with each other. Do electrons do that? I'm talking about this. You see that? That's one electron interacting with another. I don't know enough about electrons to know whether they do that. Now, I have a physicist talking about that, and it's so much over my head. I thought I would just show you because we'll all laugh together because we just don't understand what this guy's saying. But I think he says something like, under certain quantum conditions, electrons interact with each other. Listen carefully. I'm talking about this interaction. ...between different atomic orbitals. However, fundamentally, the electrons were not interacting with each other, and we could, in we could understand the physics of these problems in terms of the single particle energies and single particle states. We saw how, for example, we can do a simple Fourier transform of the Hamiltonian operator to bring it into a diagonal form for many periodic lattice structures and understands the physics in terms of a simple band structure. For truly interacting problems where the electrons see each other through the Coulomb interaction, this is not possible and we need to resort to much more sophisticated uh, techniques to understand the underlying physics. What are the underlying physics? Well, for example, it's possible to have an interaction-driven transition between a metal and an insulator, the so-called Mott transition. We'll discuss certain models of interacting fermions on the lattice, in particular the so-called Hubbard model, which treats the Coulomb interaction as very short range. It assumes that the interaction is dominant when you have uh, electrons of opposite spin occupying the same orbital, in which case you have a strong repulsion, Otherwise, the electrons do not uh, interact with each other at longer ranges. I didn't understand much at all, but I did detect an implication that inter electrons interact with each other. Now, if they don't, then I need to just drop this boron interpretation of the crop circle. But because the crop circle is showing us if these are electrons, they are interacting with each other. Well, I found a physicist who wrote an article called Electron-Electron Interactions. Our first speaker this time will be Charles Epstein uh, from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is a fine institution <laughs> where he's been majoring in experimental particle and nuclear physics under the guidance of Richard Milner. Um, he did his practicum at Lawrence Livermore National Lab and will talk to us about electron-electron interactions. Charles. Uh, thanks so much for the introduction. I'm very happy to be here today to talk to you about uh, my thesis work, which has been studying the electron-electron interaction. Okay, so that seems to... He, this guy works in fusion research at the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, okay, where they're experimenting on fusion. And he's talking about electron-electron interactions. So it seems that electrons under certain conditions interact with each other. So far, we're on, still on the right path. But the question is now, the crop circle shows electrons interacting with the nucleus. It, do they? I'm talking about that. Does electron spin have anything to do with the nucleus? That thing. Well, let's find out. In quantum physics, the spin-orbit interaction, also called spin-orbit effect or spin-orbit coupling, is any act interaction of a particle spin with its motion. The first and best known example of this is the interaction between the electron's spin and the nucleus's electric field. 
That sounds like an interaction between the electron and the nucleus to me. Okay, but we have an element in the crop circle that's mysterious and also beautiful. Look at this. Look at this shell around the nucleus. Do you see how difficult that would be to do in the middle of the night with wheat? But they did it, or whoever did it, they put a shell around the nucleus. And I noticed Boron, see that black line? Boron, does Boron have a shell? I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm asking a question. Does Boron have a shell? Hello once again. In this video, I wanted to briefly discuss the shell model structure of the nucleus. So the shell model structure of the nucleus is somewhat similar in a sense to the atomic structure. So, so it appears that there is a shell around the nucleus. Hello, today we're going to look at a basic introduction to the nuclear shell model. The shell model is one of a number of models used to describe the nucleus. These are called phenomenological models. It's that The basic structure of an atom is that there is a central nucleus, which we'll talk about in a moment, with orbiting electrons. And there may be many electrons orbiting an atom or orbiting a nucleus. The nucleus itself consists of protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged, neutrons have no electrical charge. And the question that we had to ask ourselves is, how can it be that a nucleus that has got a number of protons does not self-destruct because the Coulomb force of repulsion should make sure that all positively charged protons repel one another? But clearly that is not what happens. And so we have to say that at least over the range of the nucleus, there must be a force which we call the strong nuclear force, which is able to hold the protons together and is stronger than the Coulomb force, which is tending to push them apart. OK, so that circle around the nucleus represents the strong nuclear force. And that's described in the crop circle. That means that the crop circle shell around the nucleus refers to the shell around the nucleus of boron, or the strong nuclear force surrounding the nucleus of boron. So far, we're still on the right path, folks, even though this is kind of exhausting. OK, isn't that a nice depiction of the strong nuclear force? All right, you must be exhausted. I'm exhausted. I don't want any more physics. I've had enough. Uh, could we sum possibly summarize this without pretending we understand quantum physics? Okay, seven things that we uncovered. Very simple. Okay, get ready for a nice easy summary. This crop circle looks like it's describing boron, number one. Two, boron has five electrons. Boom. We're two-sevenths done. Three, the crop circle shows the electrons of boron spinning in clockwise and counterclockwise fashion. How can that happen? Certain special circumstances. But it's true that electrons do spin clockwise and counterclockwise. That we have established. Four, the crop circle shows the electrons are interacting with each other. Normally they don't do that, but under special circumstances, it appears that they do. Remember the guy from the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory. Okay, there's our interaction, electron to electron. Number five, the crop circle depicts a shell around the nucleus. And there appears to be a shell around the nucleus of boron, which has something to do with the strong nuclear force. Okay, two more things to say. Six. The electron spins and their interaction with the nucleus, that place, plus their with each other, that place, under certain quantum and magnetic circumstances, may be a key to success with fusion. The last statement. Overall, boron and its spin and eccentricities have something to do with nuclear fusion research and a new cutting-edge approach to fusion. That's it. In the absence of a deeper knowledge of physics and quantum mechanics, that's all we know.
And that's all we can figure out. That's all I can figure out. Okay, so now, do you remember my book that I told you about? Well, 42 Crop Circles, I attempted to translate the meaning of the crop circle as if it were a message in English to us. Are you ready? Here comes the translation of this crop circle from an extraterrestrial intelligence to us, the Boron Crop Circle. Here it is in English. Pay closer attention to Boron. Study spin orbit coupling electron interactions with the nucleus, the strong nuclear force, as well as the quantum conditions under which its electrons can interact with each other. This will aid your species in its search for nuclear fusion and sustainable energy for your planet. Thank you, E.T. I told you this was weird. I guess I didn't tell you this is weird. This is weird. Okay. Now, I have a final lament. And the lament is this. Uh, I'm not a physicist. You're not physicists. We're trying our best to figure things out. We're trying to decode it. We recognize that 99.9% .9 of academia says, silly, stupid, do not go there. Don't look up. Do not try to decode a crop circle. You'll never get tenure. We don't want to publish anything you're saying. You're crazy if you do. Ignore it, please. Well, just fantasize that you had 20 physicists who were interested in nuclear fusion and boron, and they sat around a table for two hours, and they looked at this crop circle, and they asked the question, under what circumstances with our magnets and our fusion wreck would boron behave in this way, spinning this way, spinning that way, interacting here, interacting there? Under what conditions could we put boron, which would produce what we see described in this crop circle? They might say after two hours, this is silly. Good, we'll, we'll discard that. Or they could say, my God, there's something here that we haven't thought about. Okay? I think it might be telling them something they don't know. That there's enough circumstantial evidence in this talk to say there might be something going on with Boron that you might be missing. That's the purpose of this video. All right? So... That's the book. Uh, it's available on Amazon. Published a white paper about this crop circle on the crop circle connector. If you go to my website, you can find it as well. And uh, thank you very much for watching.